Welcome to the 2020 Arnold Strongman Classic Championship. It's time now to meet the 10 gentlemen giants who will be competing for this title. Let's watch the video and meet the first athlete. 27 years old. Six feet, one inches tall, 335 pounds. Two times Slovenia's strongest man. Qualified first in points this year, battling through a right hip injury. Ladies and gentlemen, Mateusz Belshock! Your next athlete, standing six feet, nine inches tall, weighing 440 pounds from the strongman hotbed of Iceland. He is the two-time defending champ of this event, the Arnold Strongman Classic. He's been the world's strongest man. He holds the record in the elephant bar deadlift and he comes in as one of the greatest strongmen in history, known as the Mountain, Hafthor Julius Bilson. Your next athlete, 37 years old, standing six feet, two inches tall, 352 pounds of Canadian muscle. This year he qualified, winning the Arnold Strongman Classic Fort Warwick. Nine times he's reigned as Canada's strongest man from the true north, bringing his power, Jean-Francois Caron. Your next athlete making his first appearance at the Arnold Strongman Classic. He won the Arnold Australia. Five feet, 10 inches tall, 285 pounds out of Massachusetts. He's known as the world's strongest gay. It is Rob Carney. Next up, 26 years old, standing six feet, five inches tall, 330 pounds of Polish power. He won the Arnold Amateur in 2014 and has been building a resume as one of the men to watch. This year, he won the Arnold Europe, took second in two other events. He's the youngest to compete in this competition and he is stronger than he's ever been. Mateusz Kaleszkowski! Next up, he is always a fan favorite. 29 years old, six feet, three inches tall, 355 pounds. He is the reigning world's strongest man. He's twice won the Arnold USA and won it this year to get here. Last year he was second. This year he's looking to take the title known as the Dragon. He is the world's strongest man, Martin Lises.
Your next athlete two years ago was competing as an amateur. This year, he has been on fire. 24 years old, the youngest athlete in this competition. Six feet, one inches tall, 302 pounds, hailing from Ukraine. He's won two Arnold events, South America and Africa, took second in another, and coming in absolutely ready to win, Alexei Novikov! Your next athlete hails from Phoenix, Arizona. He's 39 years old, six feet, four inches tall, 370 pounds. He's been at this just about as long as anyone has. He qualified this year on points with his consistent record. His deadlift skills are legendary. He is the Iron Outlaw, Jerry Pritchett. He's the oldest athlete in this competition at 41 years of age. Six feet, one inches tall, 313 pounds from Russia. He served in the special forces there, winning multiple medals. He won the Arnold Amateur in 2013, and the crowd loves him. The Siberian Force, Mikhail Misha Shivlyakov. And finally, 27 years of age, six feet, one inches tall, 365 pounds, coming from Virginia. He won the amateur last year. Now he shares the stage with some of the greats. Ready to introduce himself to this pro competition. Welcome the newest member of the Arnold Strongman Classic Pro Level, Bobby Thompson! These are your 10 athletes, ladies and gentlemen, who are gonna spill blood sweat and tears trying to take home the title of the Arnold Strongman Classic Champion. Six events over the next two days. Athletes are on the competition floor here inside the Greater Columbus Convention Center, home of the 2020 Arnold Strongman Classic, and ready for their first event, Trial by Stone, presented by Go Rock. I'm Sam Farber, he's Dr. Bill Crawford, and we are ready. At long last, the time has come for our 10 strongest men on the planet to tackle this set of events ahead of them. Only one will come away with the crown. There are a number of athletes that are, are capable of winning it all. We take a look at our 10 competitors for you here today. Who stands out as your favorites heading into the competition? Obviously, Hafdor Bjornsson first, and then also Mateusz Kolaskowski. Martins Lysius is coming in with a lot of momentum. I expect them to be in the top three, obviously, also. But also, Alexei Dovakov is he has got a lot of events that really stack up well for him. I expect to see something out of him as well, especially this first event. 
Hathor Bjornsson is quite literally the mountain, having uh, taken that name to fame through his part on the great show Game of Thrones. But he is the mountain that all these other athletes are trying to conquer to take this title of 2020 Arnold Strongman Classic Champion. What separates him from his previous self in terms of how he has become better for this year's edition? He specifically trained for these events for the Arnold. There are a couple of events that he kind of staggered on last year. He knows that. He says he's more fit than he's been in a long time and also stronger. His weight's up a little bit also. So with his fitness and his strength right now, he's very hard to beat. A couple months ago, there was a very real chance that Martins Lichis was not going to be a part of this event. He kind of had to win his way in late. He was able to do so in Santa Monica and now comes into this competition with an awful lot of momentum. Yes, we had probably the most dramatic win I've seen in Strongman. We've talked about that already in the show. Martins Lichis came across in Santa Monica. He kept roaring back. Martins does not give up. He's like Apocalypse Martins. He's this bad dream that doesn't go away. He kept fighting and fighting and fighting. And in the end, he came out as the winner, and he's here. Well, his competition is about to get started, as it will for all of our 10 athletes. And it starts with event number one, Trial by Stone, presented by GORUCK. And this is a little bit different here in 2020 in that it is not just a stone lifting event, but it's kind of a medley. It's gonna test these athletes in different ways than maybe this type of apparatus has in the past. Yes, yeah, so, so the, the trial by stone, you have to lift five stones as quickly as possible, but there's a medley of pressing and then loading and then an endurance event with carrying the, the Husafel slab. Those stones are fat. The four first stones are fashioned after the famous Inverstone stone in Scotland. They're made by uh, Polycore, the, the uh, granite company, Swenson Granite in, in New Hampshire. So it's white granite, just like the Inverstone stone is. So these are beautiful implements. And I can't wait to see what these men do with these stones. They're, they're all experienced with stone lift against stone carriers. And the keys to the event brought to us all by Go Ruck. Let's take a look at the scoring chart for uh, this event. Again, there are three different ways you uh, have to tackle these stones. First up, you have the 275 pound stone and the 300 pound stones. These are overhead lifts. One point for the first stone, two points for the second. Then you get into the stone onto the barrel segment of it. The weights go to 365 and 400 points. Again, one or 400 pounds, one point and two points for the successive stones. And then finally, the Husafel stone. Getting it out of the start box is one. Carrying it the full 50 feet will get you three points. There is a 60 second limit per stone. They're gonna be very limited on your rest. Uh, it's gonna be a very grueling taxing event on all of these athletes. Bill, let's get your keys to the event brought to you by GORUCK. Yes, I'd say first thing you've gotta be able to do is read the stone because these stones are made in a fashion, but they're also natural stones, so they're a little uneven. The second one is getting a good efficient lift up to the lap or up to the chest and getting yourself in position to press or to put the stone on the barrel. Also, you need to pick the right pace because it's five minutes. That is a very long event. And with, with a medley with several different implements and several different uh, uh, things that we're trying to test, this is a very long event. I don't want to get redundant asking you all the athletes to watch. I'm going to give you one. Alexei Novikov, he's someone you've t mentioned to me, has the capability on this event in particular of taking down the mountain. Yes, he pushed half door to the limit last year on carrying the Husafel stone. He's very good with strength endurance, as he proved with the event with the, with the Wheel of Pain last year. So I expect him to do very well with this. He did fairly well with the stone to shoulder also, so I expect him to be able to put the stones on the barrels. It really comes down to can he get the stone above his head on the first, on the first two stones. Now, throughout the competition, going later in an event is always an advantage. Being able to see what your fellow competitors were able to do early gives you an edge. In event one, it was a blind draw, so no one really had an advantage going into it, but here is your order, and you see Martins leads. He's going ninth well after Hathor Bjornsson. He's got a huge advantage there in being able to see what he has to do in order to uh, stay behind him in the order of uh, events, uh, you know, the, the sequence of the events here. Uh, that's going to be a huge edge for him in event number one. We'll see if he can maintain it, though, throughout the rest of the competition. Yes, it's good to get that first event and have a win. Then you can go last in the second event. And that sets the pace for the rest of the competition, even tomorrow in the second set of events.
But the main thing is you want to have a good, clean start. Hafthor is very capable of just running right through these stones. Other athletes are capable of that as well. But you really want to get yourself as close to the top of the leaderboard with the first event. Get that first pace going so that you can see what others are doing in the next event. Trial by Stone presented by GORUCK, our first of six events over two days. The celebration of strength is about ready to get underway. We are ready to get things going. Machaz Belshak is first up for Trial by Stone. His third appearance here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. And just 27, still kind of entering his prime for Strongman. We've seen uh, athletes really peak much later in their career. So this is someone certainly on the upward swing heading into this, his third appearance at the Arnold Strongman Classic. Yes, he has that hip injury, so and he talks about it. So coming off the floor with that stone could be a bit of a challenge for him. He's a very strong man, though. He's, he's quite good at the static events. We'll see how he can get the stone up off the ground. All the athletes had a chance to, to start off with uh, going backstage and, and warming up with the actual implements. So that was very, very helpful. Watch out, spell shock. will be up first. Six foot one, 330 pounds. Machas told me he was born strong. <laughs> these stones look small next to these guys. That's because these guys are huge. These stones are actually quite big. <laughs> guys are huge is an understatement. <laughs> I'm very excited by this event. This is beautiful. This is the first time for the Arnold, and we're doing a lot of natural stone. Time starts as he got his hands on to that first 275 pound stone. 60 seconds per stone. Did get the signal that it was a good lift. Had that little bit of sway and there is some judges, uh, I don't want to say discretion, but the, the judges were are the final say. One point for that 275 pound stone, next up the 300 pound stone. Yes, yeah, so the judge does rule that. I talked to Carl Gillingham, who's the head judge this year, and he did say that as long as you get to extension, you don't want to put your head under a stone because that can that could be a bad thing if it comes down on you. It's not a barbell. I don't think he got the pass on that. He's going to keep going. He waves it off. Now, you can continue stone to stone even if you fail on a rep. Obviously, he was close on that one, so he takes the opportunity to, to give it a shot. Yes. But he won't get the two points there. Now back to a one point lift here on the 365 pound stone, getting it on top of the barrel. Same size stones just keep going up in weight. Just like in Scotland, they lifting them up, lifting them up onto the barrels. Many people have seen the famous McGlashan stones, so those were lifted up on the barrels, but this is the Inverstone replica. Again, reading the stone, you know, there's some subtleties on these stones. We had a look at them. There's a little dimple here, a dimple there. Not, a, not able to use uh, thick tacky. They can use the tacky rag. So he's passing the 365 pound stone. Very likely he'll pass the 400 pound stone as well. And, you know, the Husafeld stone being a different shape, it, does that give certain athletes maybe who are struggling with these rounder stones an opportunity to tackle an even heavier stone? Well, you can stand the Hoosville stone up and you can then actually lift it without being down on the ground so much. This is particularly difficult for Macha. He has got his right leg far out. That's that, that, uh, that hip is really bothering him. He has to at least make a valid attempt to continue on in the competition. That's why, he keeps, that's why he's stepping up to this one even though he didn't complete the, the third stone. This is the 400 pound stone. Machaz Belshak, our first competitor in our first event. Trial by stone. So when you have strongman boxes, they're usually at uh, either 52 or 56 inches in height. And that's because that's the size of a whiskey barrel. So they went and got some bur bourbon barrels here. And true to being exactly on every single event, Told that Bill confirmed it was a whiskey barrel. He emptied it himself. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> but 
Rogue went out and got some whiskey barrels and, and uh, put some put some rubber on top so that it doesn't uh, collapse the top of the barrel. Beautiful barrels, by the way. So Machaz Belshak using that minute to give himself some rest and a shot here at the Husafel Stone. 409 pounds, but again, the shape of it, even though it might be awkward for some of our athletes, hopefully it will suit him better than the Stones have. I think it will. He has to at least try a valid attempt. He gets a point for carrying it, picking up, and getting it out of the box. Let's see how he's trying to position the stone a little bit. This is made out of Icelandic stone. It's actually a basalt. If anyone's interested in that, it was computer graphics were used to to make this stone exactly like the replica uh, is a complete replica of the Husafel stone. Machaz Belshak will bow out one point, able to lift the 275 pound stone and get it overhead. He was close on the 300 pound stone. Uh, after that, unable to really get anything going. Yes, it's that that hip's really bothering him. That's a shame because he's been a great competitor in this strongman series for the Arnold and has done so well in the past years. I know that he uh, has actually shouldered the stone before uh, in the stone by uh, stone, but, uh, but to shoulder in the past. So he's a good stone lifter. This is just a tough year for him with an injury. So here he is. He's read the stone very well. He did have a very tremendously uh, efficient lift, getting it up to his chest. And then he gets it overhead. He locks his arms, and the referee gives him the go. He just can't get his hips under this stone to, to make a lift. You, you see, he can't even really step up into the stone, so graciously bowing out. Jaz Belshak of Slovenia. One point on the board. Next up is Jerry Pritchett. Jerry's a great presser, as he showed in the Arnold uh, series at Santa Monica. He did a Log press, uh, he's got several reps with it. He's a very good presser. He's also very strong in the back. We talked about his deadlift prowess, so this should be an event that he'll do well in. He's very experienced also. He's coming up on a decade of elite strongman competition experience. One of the older competitors in the field at 39, but one of the strongest with brute strength as well. Here he is on the 275 pound stone, fairly easy to the chest. And uh, he sees wow. you like over <laughs> I like it. Now 300 pounds. This would give him the early lead. Jerry's a staple on the top top level strongman circuit, and he's showing you why. Seems like the press is the easy part. He got the down. That's great. What these what the referee is looking for is control over the head and even though the, the elbows aren't completely locked out he had it pressed overhead. This is not a barbell. Understanding that barbells are made to be lifted. These stones were just fashioned and they're trying to lift them. 365 pounds. This one is not a press overhead. This is get it to the top of the barrel for some of our shorter competitors. There's not much difference but for Jerry Pritchett this is uh, just getting it to the chest is going to get him pretty darn close. Yes. Pushing his feet down. He's trying to get an efficient lift up to his lap. Take a moment. He has 60 seconds per stone. Yes. And here's where some of the strategy maybe comes into play if Jerry has uh, figured out that this is not going to be his lift figuring out how to measure his rest so he has a shot at the Husafel stone that could start to become a factor. Yes, it could be. So he's, he's going on now to the four stone, the 400 pound stone. We saw Machaz Belshank skip this one entirely and it looks like that's the same signal that Jerry Pritchett is giving here. He did break the other one off the ground. So let's see what he's got. Sometimes a stone will have a little bit of a little bit different shape. You can read it better and maybe it comes up to his lap a little more quickly. Which is very, very close. He's just using his time. He's going to wait until he gets to where he can actually have the Husafel stone as his last implement. Sure, you're staying with us. Don't go anywhere. Half Thor Bjornsson is next up to the competition floor. He will be directly after Jerry Pritchett, who is bypassing the 400 pound stone. He's got three points in the bag already. He's your current leader. And we'll see what he can do with the Husafel stone. If he's able to lift that 409 pound stone and just get it out of the start box, he'll get one point. 
if he can complete the course, he'll get three points and double his score. Well, the Arnold's known for being the heaviest competition, and you can see those stones are a testament to that. He's got it up. Here he goes. Here he goes. He's out of the box. Can he make it the full 50 feet? I think he's got it. He's moving his feet. He's breathing. He's got a good handle on the stone. He got it. Three points. Doubling his score. Jerry Pritchett is your leader. Seven points total here on trial by Stone. Sam, that could prove to be a very, very large number as we get further down in this competition because those stones are obviously showing how tough they are. Terrific off the ground, efficient lift. He read the stone very well, up to his chest very smoothly. Got his hands under it. Great press. He did pace himself, as, as you know. He just walked over to the next stone, knowing, noting that he's got one minute each time. Great with the pressing. Moving his feet, moving his feet, trying to outwalk his grip because the grip starts to fail in this event. See how the stone's sliding down, but he got the whole 50 feet. Great run by Jerry. Kimball will just chuck it at the end, much like he did with those early stones up to 300 pounds. So seven points on the board for Jerry Pritchett. He's your current leader, and now your defending champ, Hapthor Bjornsson. The Mountain will take on Trial by Stone, presented by Goruck. Hapthor's Icelandic, obviously. Icelanders can lift stones. Natural stone lifting is something that, essentially, they grew up doing a lot of famous stones in Iceland. The last one is obviously a replica of the stone from his country. I expect him to do quite well with this event. He's been pressing stones. He got a 320 pound Atlas stone over his head in, in training. And he told me that his pressing has been very, very strong this, this season. So he's ready. He could with those previous accomplishments just fly through this competition. He's our first one to really uh, kind of prepare the stones ahead of time. Yes, he's leaving a piece of chalk next to each of the stones. He's going to take a little bit different, a little bit different uh, approach on this, in that he's going to mostly use chalk instead of the tacky. And uh, that tacky rag, maybe that's not the best approach uh, in his estimation. There's a little bit of grain on these stones. They were very carefully measured so that there wasn't so much grain that it would actually cut the athletes when they try to lift them but giving them enough grain to be able to get them off the ground. I can tell you that these replicas are not as sharp as the Inverstone itself. The Inverstone itself is much more sharp. In other words, the grain's a lot harder to deal with. Now Thor Bjornsson in his final preparations now. Here in event number one, seven points is the mark to beat, but the Mountain is the favorite to at least end his heat as the leader. We'll see if he can make that a reality. Making that thing look like a pebble. Super efficient lift up position. Even though his wide shoulders are there outside of the stone, he just shot it right up. One point on the board, now the 300 pound stone. Easy. He looks like he could do this all day. That one came off his shoulder a little bit on the descent, didn't phase him, a 300-pound stone. Now 365, easily wow. onto the barrel. 400 pounds. One of the great stone lifters ever. Makes quick work of the 400. Now he's down to the Husafel stone. He's under a minute. I thought he was gonna go under a minute, and I think he's gonna do it. He's got about 15 seconds. Quick lift up to his lap. Here he goes. Does he have the grip on the Husafel stone? He's making his moves, being a little careful here. Make sure he doesn't drop it early, and he puts Great it down it. under a minute. Under a minute. That's what I was talking about. I thought he would go through this medley under a minute. Fantastic. Your two-time defending champion making a statement going under a minute. I have to say that I was expecting him to do well, but that might be a little better than I was expecting. Even within a very fast run, careful to make sure he had everything in place. That's exactly what he's doing. He's being very careful. He hasn't had the, the luxury of seeing the other athletes go 
before him. So he's just trying to make it through the competition without making a mistake, and he did not. Here he goes. Does he have the grip on the Husafel Stone? 409 pounds on the Husafel Stone. And really only the grip was a question on whether or not he would have it. Is, you know, he it seemed like he was trying to go under a minute, very cognizant of how quickly he was going. Yes. So we've got our first perfect run in the books, and time is only a factor for other athletes who have it. And obviously, Hafthor Bjornsson said a very Tough time to beat, but our other athletes now have a look at it, including Mateusz Kieliszkowski, his sixth appearance here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. And he's a pretty young competitor to Very have already young. been here six times. I think at one point he might have been seen as uh, the future of this sport, and he probably still is. I say he still is. He just needs a little more time to get that, uh, what we call old man strength, maturing as a strength athlete. Getting closer to upper 20s and age, and he'll start to get more of that static strength. And when that happens, everybody needs to step aside. He's got a lot of terrific qualities to his abilities as a strong man. He's very athletic. I expect in this event he will press those two stones very quickly. I think the 400-pound stone is going to be the place where he's going to prove himself in this event. It's not so much speed. It's just getting through that, that fourth stone. The athletes have been congregating. They are getting a chance to kind of see each other go after this. What can you discern from as an athlete watching the mountain go through that medley in a minute? Well, what you can't do is watch that and say, I'm going to get under a minute. You just have to stay inside your limits and do the best you can because that's all you can do anyway. So you can't let that you can't rush and make a mistake because half Thor did not make a mistake. Trial by Stone underway, Kieliszkowski. I expect that, an excellent press. So at 10 seconds, he's got the first two stones done. This is going to be the tail of the tape right here. How well does he get this stone up? Very good. Excellent. Faster on the first two stones, maybe a bit slower here, getting them to the barrel, but able to complete the 400 pound stone and now it's the Husafel stone. He got that one. He was really worried about that poor stone, but obviously, you know, I didn't think that would be a problem for him because last year he shouldered that stone five times. It weighs more than that. Here he comes. He's going to be under a minute. He looks like he's going to be closer to 50 seconds. Kieliszkowski moving his seat. the new wow. time to beat. Wow. Unbelievable. 10 points, perfect score, and the fastest time so far. He's got to be really happy about that. He didn't make any mistakes. He pushed the pace a little bit. He's young and he's very conditioned as an athlete. Even with that arm injury, he still got that 400 pound stone up onto the barrel. We mentioned at the onset, there was an advantage to going later. You earn that through yes. your earlier performance later, but you just get that by blind luck in this first event. How big was it here? That was that was quite big. He, he got to go after half door, not so much after the other athletes, but behind half door. Very efficient lifts to the chest. You can tell that it's not a challenge for him getting his hands under and just almost in one movement. A little bit more pace to getting these onto the barrel with the heavier stones. Yes. And had a great walk. You can tell he's really digging his fingers into the stone, hanging on, hanging on. He's trying to outwalk his grip. Excellent. Great event. Again, I just want to mention those uh, first four stones the, that Polycore, Swenson Granite, and New Hampshire made. Uh, beautiful implements. Very, very nice. It's made out of white granite, just like the white granite in Scotland. Amazing. Next up is Rob Kearney, his first appearance at the Arnold Strongman Classic, winner of the Arnold Strongman Australia. 28 years old from Massachusetts. And one of the most colorful competitors here, obviously, with the hairdo. Yes, he's he's actually a very good presser, too. And he's been pressing. Uh, he, I talked to him yesterday. He's been doing repetitions with Atlas stones over 300 pounds. Atlas stones, you have to have your hands further under a stone. If you can press an Atlas stone, these stones are a little bit wider. Notice they're compressed a little bit. So you have a little wider, a little wider grip on the stone. So you can probably press them more easily than an Atlas stone. There's a little bit of grain on the stones. I don't see him using the 
tacky claw too much. Strongman experience going back to 2014. But again, this is his first time on the big stage here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. Yes, he won the Australia Arnold Strongman. So that's why he's here. Aside from the, you know, the kind of colorful uh, persona, he's actually a minimalist in the way he trains. He's very, very proficient. Excellent lift. Wow. I think that was pounds. the best one with that. We've seen some good lifts with that. Kieliszkowski went a bit faster through these first two lifts, but in terms of efficiency, you're right. Kearney right there and a little struggle there at the top on the 300-pound stone. And he can't rush. He's got to just get it over his head. Does get credit for the 300 pound stone. So he's up to three points next to the barrel on 365. That was head judge Carl Gillingham giving him the pass on that one. Nice lift. Very good lift. Has that little bump at the end. Half Thor has a, almost a full foot on Rob Kearney. So, you know, just lifting this to the chest might not be enough. He's got to get that little extra bit of effort to get it atop the barrel. Yeah, so pressing, it's a little bit of an advantage to have shorter arms, but and getting it off the ground, but actually then getting it up onto the barrel is another matter altogether. He might just take his time a little bit, catch his breath, and then look at the points. No, he's going to go back to it. That'd be a terrific. He's, notice he's reading the stone. We're talking about the three keys to success. The first is just reading the stone, getting it off the ground, getting your hands in the best spot. There he goes. He turned the stone. A little shorter arm, so he made it where a purchase was more available for him. Look at that. Beautiful lift, Rob Kearney. That man is thinking. Love it. That's great. Has a chance now not to take the event lead, but to still have a perfect run in terms of points. And that is going to be a big separator here early in this competition. Husafel Stone, 409 pounds. If I were Rob, I would do exactly what he's doing. He slowed down a little bit. He took his time, and he's he's getting all the stones. He's still under two minutes. That's still a really fantastic time. He would only be the third man to complete the course. Hang on to it, Rob. You got it. Keep moving your feet. Trying to maintain that grip. Final few feet and welcoming himself into the competition. Rob Kearney able to complete the course. Wow. That is commitment. You've got to come out here ready to give that kind of effort. I really loved what he just did. It didn't look like he was going to get that four stone. Laying out at the end, Rob Kearney able to put 10 points on the board in just over two minutes. Really efficient, beautiful lift. What I really love is that four stone where he turned the stone. He's got shorter arms, so he made it a little more available to himself by turning the stone around. That's thinking. That's exactly what you got to do. Now watch his hands. He's pressing his fingertips into that stone. They're sliding, slipping. He's moving his feet because moving your feet is distance. And then he totally commits to getting it over that line. Wow. One of the most entertaining runs. Next up is Bobby Thompson. We're halfway through the competition. We have seen three athletes be able to complete all five stones. Surprising to you at all in terms of the number able to complete the course or the time that has been set, not by the mountain, but by Mateusz Kieliszkowski. No, I expected that to be sort of what's going to happen. I expected that to happen. So, I, you know, just that time, that 10 seconds back and forth, I expected both of them to have really strong runs, very efficient runs with good times. Now we're down to Bobby Thompson. He's the U.S. Uh, representative who won the Arnold last year for the amateurs. He's kind of an unknown. He's done quite well in some of the competitions. Very strong man, obviously, but I really haven't seen a lot of performance to have a have an opinion on what he's going to do at this level. Last year, he was the champion in the Arnold Amateur World Championship, and now coming on to the big stage, 27-year-old rookie, so to speak, from Fredericksburg, Virginia. See the time to beat, set by Mateusz Kieliszkowski. So they're wearing those shirts that have those little beads on them that actually allows the stone to kind of not stick to it, but it's a lot more of a 
grip surface. Good read, good position. You might want to put his hips into it, not just try to do a strict press. This isn't a competition to see who can strict press. He wants to just push it up and get it over. Struggling there at the end, flexing that bicep a bit. He's got a full minute to attempt this stone. This is where he slows down a little bit, reads the stone. This is a moment of clarity for him. He really wants to get this stone over his head. Everyone else has been able to get this first one. This also proves the level of competition that we're at, that an athlete of this ability struggles with the first implement. Better Roll read. to his chest. Just not going to happen now. Likely hood is that he'll bypass the second stone altogether. He's going to call it on stone one. Remember, there's five stones. The first two is the overhead press, 275 and 300 pound stones. Then it's to the top of the barrel, 365 and 400. And then you wrap it up with the Husafel stone, where it's can you get it out of the box and can you get it into the opposite box 50 feet away? Yes. He can still score a lot of points. Remember, uh, Machas really str struggled with with the second press, and then just that hip just wasn't allowing him to do much of anything with the other stones. He just couldn't get them off the ground. So, but this this stone also is a little bit different than that other stone. Maybe it's a better read for him, and he can actually get it over his head. He had it almost over his head, the 275. Well, to get it to his chest. Very efficient. Use some hips. There you go. Look. How about it? How about that? He doesn't get the 275, and he gets the 300. Again, these are natural type stones that read. Maybe it's a little easier, even though it's heavy, because all these guys can lift 300 pounds. It's just an odd implement. 100% speaking to what you were talking about, the shape of that individual implement, it is not a barbell. It's not a matter of can these guys lift 275 or 300 pounds overhead. All of them can. Yes. It's can they move this somewhat awkward apparatus? Right. I talk about the uh, barbells being designed to be lifted. The stones are defiant. Here now, we go with the third implement. 365 pounds. This time it's to the top of the barrel. There he goes. He's turning it. Now these are these are Inverstone replicas, and the Inverstone itself is only 265 to 270 pounds. These are much heavier, so he's turning it to try to get his hands under a little better. Making valid lifts so far. Still on two points. He's going to come over and touch the 400-pound stone and use that as a rest period. The Husafel stone itself has some options in how you carry it, but is a, a little bit more shaped to be carried by these men. Possibly so, but it's also very, very smooth. That's the evil part about the Husafel, the, the Husafel stone and about this replica that's very smooth. There's no good place to really grab it. It fights you the whole time. Some of the guys, when he gets to the stone, I think he's just going to stand and collect himself here, collect himself here when he gets to the Husafel stone. I actually recommend some of the athletes, particularly some of the shorter athletes, turn the stone 90 degrees. And the reason you would turn it 90 degrees, it's a wider purchase on the stone. And you can pull it up to the bottom part of your chest as opposed to higher up. Higher up on your chest is a problem. Magnus from Magnuson will tell you that if you watch old World Strongest Man, where in Iceland with the Husafell stone, he had trouble with it. We've had many discussions about that. And uh, Magnus knows a lot about this stone. He'll tell you, maybe turn it sideways. Don't throw it so high up in your chest. We haven't seen anyone take that strategy with it just yet. Judging by the way Bobby Thompson's approaching it. He wants to step forward a little bit to be able to get it up because he's he's way behind that stone. He wants to step forward just a little bit, I would recommend. If he steps forward, he kind of swing it up to his lap. Trying to measure it. He's near the bottom of the standings right now based off what we've seen. What would it do for his confidence there if he's he made in competition if he's able to get this one down the course? He turned the stone a little bit differently. I still recommend he turns it sideways, turn it 90 degrees and get his arms under a little differently. He needs to step forward some too. He's got his feet way behind the stone. You want your that center of the stone way back behind the heels, honestly. He's going to call it Bobby Thompson two points impressive to see him able to get that 300 pound stone up in the air after failing to do so at 275. Yes I think that was quite astounding but again these stones are different and, and the reads are a little bit different. You notice that 
Rob really, Rob Kearney really struggled with struggled with the third stone, but got the fourth stone up. Here's the 275. He just couldn't get a good read on it. Just really struggled with it. Maybe because it's a little smaller. He's got big wide shoulders, so the 300 pound stone was a little more amenable to get his hands under it. Efficient lift, locked his arms out, got the down signal. Good lift. Four competitors remain, including Martins Leitzis, who is second to last. He is your reigning runner up in the Arnold Strongman Classic. And he has the benefit of having seen the times to beat by both Hathor Bjornsson and Mateusz Kieliszkowski. Next up on the competition floor is Alexei Navikov. Alexei from Ukraine, 24 years old in his second Arnold Strongman Classic competition. And you felt strongly this is an event that he could and maybe should excel in. I expect that the pressing will be the part that he'll have the most challenge with. And then if he gets past the presses cleanly, then the stones on the barrel should be a good event. And then he's going to grab that Husafel stone and take off. And when you say get past, do you mean get past as in complete period? Complete or get them. past efficiently enough to have a chance at finishing under a minute? I think I think he's I think what he should do is just try to get through these cleanly. And I think his time will be reflected in getting the cleanest lifts, the best reads on those stones three and four. But the pressing is going to be the part that's really going to change. There he is. He's turned that stone 90 degrees. So is he someone who could be at a disadvantage going later in the sense that maybe it puts more pressure on him to go faster than he should be trying to, whereas if he was first or second, he's just trying to get through the courts? Possibly so. I, th I do think that that a, a good strong man has a, has a memory that allows him to not focus or dwell on other performances by others or his own performance or lackings. He just needs to clear his mind, make really deliberate moves with these stones, particularly the first two. He needs to get those over his head. And then, it, then he's going to have to make decisions as you go, which is tough because you're Oxygen are deprived. Your muscles are screaming, and you're and you're trying to think about. Okay, do I keep moving? Do I do I do I stay at this stone? How much energy do I expend? It's the first event of the competition. Looks like he is ready to begin his journey here at the 2020 Arnold Strongman Classic. First two stones. It's the press overhead, 275 and 300, then it's the top of the barrel, 365 and 400, and finally the Husafel stone. Here he goes. 275 easily rolls it to the chest and Beautiful. overhead. You okay. said that was the hard part? That's for him. It, this is the part that's really going to challenge him. Did you see how he rolled that stone forward? Beautiful read. Beautiful read. A little bit wider. Using his hips, not just using his shoulders to press. Got it overhead at but 300 not, pounds, but not quite extended on both arms, apparently. Correct. The arm closest as his left arm looked like it was locked out, but he had that right arm still cocked a bit. As we talked, he needs to get past these two. This is going to be his his event, part of the event that's going to tell what, how well he does in this event. We We've seen three men complete all five stones so far. This is the one that you felt would be his most difficult, and it's proving to be so. Yes. So Novikov is not going to be able to complete that two point stone at 300 pounds. Well, just in my experience of watching Strongman, he's a young athlete, so the static events will be the big challenge for him. Pressing overhead, deadlift. Quickly got the stone up to his lap. These two I didn't think he'd have a problem with, honestly. So and far, he's gonna do so. A, he's gonna do very well with the it's going to do very well with the Husafel stone as well. Remember last year he pushed half or right over 200 feet. Told me earlier, Alexei Novikov is an athlete who is built to and capable of suffering out there longer than many or most of even the world's strongest. Yes. Two points for the 400 pound stone and now the Husafel stone. Time still a factor compared to the other athletes he's going with, but being unable to score 10 points, he can maybe take his time a little bit in terms of making sure he's ready to complete this course. Yes, he shouldn't get too discouraged, even though he missed that, that second stone to press overhead. He should not be too discouraged by that. This will still put him well into the other 
with the other athletes. He's a little bit wider purchase. He's kind of trying to turn it in a very quite an unusual way. I don't know. Uh, He's got to get out of the box and score points. There he goes. Okay, that's it. Now he's going to run with this. This is the first athlete to use this wider Purchase. grip that you've been talking about. Yes. Struggling at the midway mark. Can he keep the grip? Move your feet. Novikov inches away now. Stretching for it. Is it wow. enough? Yes! He got it. I'm shocked by that, actually, because last year he did such a great job with the Husafel stone, but it just tells you that this was a long event. The other stones spent a lot of energy, but he did complete four of the five stones. Eight points for that run from Alexei Novikov. Beautifully efficient, read the stone very well, pressed overhead. Looks right now he's on a good pace. Gets to the third stone. I expected him to do well with these. He really has great hip power. This is why we're here. Inch by inch, the heart of a champion. He got here for a reason. Great job. Again, a little surprised by that. The Husfeld stone, also known as the Kriya Shedlin, which is the pin slab. Husfeld is just the place where it's located. <laughs> Next up is our oldest competitor, but one of the most accomplished as well, Mikhail Shivlikov, the Siberian force. Misha, one of the strongest on the planet year after year after year. Podium finished two here. years ago. Podium finished two years ago, fourth last year. Uh, always got a smile on his face. Winner of the Zhukov Award, so he's a great special forces soldier for his country. Efficient lift right up. It's a very good presser. Oh, little little stall on the top. top. And you can see that left ankle off the end of it. Yeah. I don't know what happened there. I can't see if that's his lower leg or his foot. Because he is a good athlete. A great athlete. always not well to him. And I can't tell if it's his left leg. I, if Sam, I don't know if you, you saw something I didn't see. He's sort of limping a bit. Looks like a hamstring kind of because he can't put his heel down. Uh, yeah. told, it's his, told his ankle is the issue here. Ankle, okay. Up to the shoulders, really efficient lift. There you go, he's a great presser. And again, just hopping around off that left ankle. Okay. And this is this is where Mikhail has made his living as strongman. He's going to keep pushing forward. He's going to keep moving forward, getting instruction from Carl Gillingham. He's going to pass on that second on stone. The stone. He's just kind of shaking his head no. But how impressive is it already? I mean, obviously, uh, this injury is having an effect on him to get the 275-pound stone up on the second attempt. As a Siberian, he's a tough guy. He's going to really try to, he's going to do his best on trying to make some points here, stay out of the bottom part of the order. Being told in the warm up, he had the issue, a high ankle sprain, and still willing and wanting to tackle this 365 pound stone. Injuries just, in any sport, it's always a factor and an unfortunate one, uh, but. Strong man, no different. Yes, if the physical is not there, the mental cannot be there behind it. And that's that's proven over and over. An athlete's confidence is in their, their abilities for the most part. I would imagine with that ankle injury, it makes the Husevel stone almost impossible to, to take 50 feet. Well, does he lift it and try to get it out of the get box? Get it out of the box and score the points because it would still keep him out of the last place spot. He's made a valid attempt there. This is really important because these types of events, strength, endurance, he's done very well in the past. He's a very good presser. He's bowing out. And again, with an athlete like Shivlyakov, being the oldest in the field is not necessarily something that makes it harder in the here and now because of his you know, strength, his ability to qualify for this field. But it means that window is getting shorter and shorter, obviously. And so you, you would love to see him be able to compete 
at his peak, and unfortunately, it's just not there. That's very unfortunate early on. Here's a look at his first lift and the grit and determination to get this stone up. Remarkable. Up to the shoulders, very efficient. He hung in there. He relifted the stone. He read it very well. Efficient lift of the shoulders, pushed it up and back. That ankle just isn't allowing him to have weight on him. And that's almost 300 pounds over your head. And in his body weight, that's 600 pounds basically on that ankle. So with an injury. Thus far, only three men have been able to take it through all five of our stones here in trial by stone presented by Gorug. And we expect this to be the fourth man to do it and maybe set the time to beat last year's runner up, Martins Lichis. He's got time to sort of set himself up. He's seen the other half, his main comp some of his main competition and half Thor and, and Matios. Martins has been able to press a 320 pound Atlas stone overhead twice in succession in training. So he's a very good presser. He's worked very hard to make this kind of a better event for him. He's very good with stones that we saw in the sandbags. He's very good with things from the floor up to his chest. And then the Husserfeld stone, it's a strength endurance event, which he's got that motor, that big motor we talk about. There was a very real possibility a couple of months ago that he was not going to make it to this competition based off the Santa Monica result. He won his way into the field with a lot of momentum as well. Yes. So Martins, you know, maybe a benefactor for having uh, a less comfortable route back here to Columbus than he would have otherwise hoped for. Yes, he also has that, that right neck injury that's caused some tingling down the right arm a bit. And he talks about that. So that's healed for the most part, but at this level of competition with the weight of what we're looking at, does that have something to do with this as well? Now he's had the benefit of getting to watch some of the other uh, top competitors in particular for this event. How important is it for him to beat that time, not just to get through all five stones, but to beat the time and keep that status heading into event number two? Well, there's, there's two sides to pace. One is pace and that you want to keep pushing, but also pace and that you don't go too fast and make a mistake. He needs to go through this flawlessly, whatever pace that he picks. He can't make a mistake. Press, press, load, load, carry. He is ready to begin his run. 53.72, the time to beat, set by Kieliszkowski. And here he goes. 275 wow. up easily. Jams it overhead. 300 pounds. Notice how he's rolling the stone. That's his way of reading it overhead. A little bit of a delay here. A little bit of a mistake. Oh, he's stumbling with this. And this could cost him unable to get that 300 pound stone. That almost makes it impossible for him to match the time set by both Bjornsson and Kieliszkowski. But it can still finish. And that's the key. That's how he spins the stone. That's his way of reading it and getting it overhead. So he did He did get the stone over his head in control. Next up, 365 pounds. I expect him to do quite well with both these loading stones. He's very good at that. That's the event that he finished up World's Strongest Man last year to win. 400 pounds next. Pushes his feet through very efficient reads. Very good reads, very efficient lift up. Got it right on the box. Now, here's, there's, here's the experience. He knows that if he rushes, he might not have the best time. So he knows he's not first or second. He's going to take his time. He's got about a minute to get through this. And he's he doesn't only got a minute to, to do the stone. So Correct. finishing here means he'll be in third position. And oh. a little stumble out of the gate. Yes, he needs a better, needs a better purchase on the stone. See his fingers are sliding. But he's blocking his wrist into it. He's moving his feet. He's trying to outrun that grip. He's leads. He's inches away. Can he get there? No. 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 He came up short. It landed just short. He can pick it up and bring it back to the original area. It seems he's talking to him. He's asking, did he make it there? And the judge he said he's said, done. So one point for that final lift will not get the full 10. And for the moment, that still has him in the top four. 
but had he made it that extra couple of inches, he would have been in third. Yes, it, you can see his hands when he got his hands on the stone, but it expended so much energy, maybe sweating and the stone's very slick. Two seventy five right up. That's his read is to roll the stone up very efficient up to his chest. Great press expected that second stone. A little bit of a mistake, but he was able to hang on and keep it over his head. Getting the down signal. Really the third and four stones I expected that just really great lifts almost there. He just fell short with that one. So that puts him I believe in fourth not Correct. completing the course. Rob Kearney earlier had that last minute last second dive with that 409 pound who's stone was able to finish it uh, not so lucky here for martins leeches and you hear it said in a lot of different sports you can't win a competition in the first inning or the first quarter but you can lose it and you wonder with that performance for martins leeches he's not out of the competition in any sense but his chances of winning it just got a lot lower well he's in fourth place and honestly, at this point, he's at fourth place. Still have to watch JF go. But uh, he always comes back and does surprising things. So you can't count him out. Like I said, he's this knight of the living Martins. He just doesn't go away. He just keeps pressing and pressing forward. JF is a very good presser. JF's also very strong in his back. So I expect that stone lifting is something that he will be quite good at. Nine times he's been Canada's strongest man. We talked about Alexi as being a dark horse, but some people have predicted that JF might be the, the, the dark horse outside the, the, the top three guys that we typically see. And it wouldn't be an, it wouldn't be some sort of surprise like Maxime Boudreau because JF's been a top top competitor for a very long time and won the Fort Warwick's Arnold in this series to get to this point to be here at the main show at the World Championships of the Arnold Series. Very smart man as well. He's won mathematics awards and was a chess champion. So I think he'll be able to walk his way through this. And if he has to do some thinking, he will make very clear decisions. So far, only three men have been able to finish the trial by stone presented by Go Ruck in our final competitor for it. J.F. Caron, 275 easily enough. Taking a moment before the 300 pound stone. This is his final press. Did not get the down signal. Needs a little more chalk. He's taking his time. What he wants to do is methodically get through this course. He wants to finish. He feels that the finish is going to keep him up in the top half. This is a very, very difficult event because there are so many components to this. It's a good way to get going in, in the competition overall for the weekend. A lot of different components of strength being tested. To the chest, using some hips overhead, got the down. Okay, now expect these. He's very experienced with Atlas stones. I expect these to come up pretty well, even though these are, these are not Atlas stones. Not taking a whole lot of time to recover. No, 365. He doesn't need it. No, he doesn't. I, as I said, he's very experienced with these types of stones. Now, at this point, he can finish in the top three still. He's got four points so far, six now that he's completed the 400 pound stone. And if he can get through this course, roughly, I think it was 215, 220 we were looking at with Kearney. Yes. Not only that, he knows that Martins did not finish. Correct. So with a decent time here, he could find himself in third place. He's, he's thinking, okay. Make a good lift. He's reading his read on the stone is to lift it exactly like it's on the floor. Good pick, fishing up. Here he goes. He's got his wrists on the on the stone. He's not really digging his fingers in as much as his wrist. Good methodical walk. There he goes. Caron. Wow. 
Wow. Third place. We'll wait for the official tallies, but I believe that is fast enough to put him in third. And one of only four of our 10 competitors able to complete the trial by stone. In impressive fashion, J.F. Caron. Good read on the first stone, efficient up to his chest, rams it overhead. Strode a little bit with the second stone, but eventually was able to get it over his head, uses his hips to get the stone up over his face and then press it out. Very experienced with stone loading. He didn't have to turn the stones. Methodically, step by step, digging his fingers in. Look at, his, look at that concentration on his face. Taking deep breaths, taking deep breaths, moving his feet. Fantastic performance. Very impressive indeed. Again, one of only four to complete this entire discipline. But the winner is Mateusz Kieliszkowski. Had the benefit of seeing what Hathor Bjornsson was able to do in terms of time, go right afterwards and uh, post an even better one. Kieliszkowski standing by with our Kiki Dixon. Mateusz, this is the first time we've seen Trial by Stone at the event here. What did you like best about this event? Oh, it's totally new events. I never expect that I can win this. Because if I be honest, I didn't train this event. I trained only overhead press. Because one month ago, I turned my lats. I don't want to talk for anymore. But I go to my doctor, and doctor put a PRP blood injection for me. And I take tablets to faster recovery. And he told that better don't touch this, don't train. Maybe it will be fixed faster. Because if I start move, it can be broke and hurt again. So I press only light stones. And this one, heavy stones, was big surprise for me because when I go there, I think too much because it, it can break, it can hurt again. But uh, it was good surprise for me. It was okay now, and I'm really happy because I won this. Well, congratulations on that event win. How's the bicep holding up? Biceps is good. Now this bicep after surgery is stronger than left, so. Hey, not a bad problem to have. Congratulations. Thank you. Injured, what's he gonna do when he's healthy? Mateusz Kieliszkowski, winner of event one. Blowing through the first press, 275 going up very quickly. He's a great presser, we know that. Didn't even use his hips, just very strict pressing. Very efficient lifts, got a great read on it. He's taller. Watch him move his feet. He's gonna complete under a minute. Skowski able to complete just uh, about a second and a half faster than Hathor Bjornsson. We welcome you back here to our Iron Game set here. Uh, just a very impressive performance. We thought the order that these athletes were able to go here was going to be a factor. Maybe a little bit more for Martins Leachies later on, but again, Keely Skowski taking advantage, and I think him knowing the time certainly seemed to play a factor. Yes, it was all by luck of draw, and I think Hathor might have had that additional advantage as well. But the main thing that each of those athletes did is they stayed inside of how well they can perform on these events. They didn't rush, they didn't make a mistake, as you saw. They got through each of the events efficiently and set themselves up to make that last big run with the Husabel Stone and get that lower time. But both, both of those men really well with inside their their cap capabilities. I was a little surprised by Martins, even though he had the advantage of having that later placement and seeing what the other men did. I was a little surprised that he had st struggled so much with the first two stones and then so much with the with the Husafel stone. Well, we've got our standings through one event. The uh, results a uh, little bit of a surprise maybe and uh, some of our athletes not completing uh, trial by stone. But we did have four make it through with all 10 points. And you see the uh, results. You, you get partial points for some of the ties in there. But Mateusz Kieliszkowski is in first place with that 10-point finish. Rob Kearney and J.F. Caron, in addition to Hathor Bjornsson, also able to complete the course. And then uh, Martins Leitz is a, a minimal penalty in terms of points. 
but still uh, outside of the top four. That's going to do it for event number one. Coming up next, women's bag over bar, our rogue record breakers on deck.